In today's tutorial, I wanted to show you the process I use to make my backgrounds for animations in Adobe Animate. So let's jump right into it. Tip -tot. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut. Today I'm going to take you through the process of how I make backgrounds for my animations. Now this isn't the best way to make backgrounds or the perfect um, way to make backgrounds, but it is the way that I make backgrounds uh, based on my skills and limitations and hopefully going through it will be useful for some of you. Um, some people were, were interested in how I made the backgrounds for my serial swiper animation, which you can watch on my silly animation channel, uh, link TC1. I'll put a link to that in the top right of the video. But essentially I'll be taking you through how I make my backgrounds from building the mock-up in Blender all the way through to doing the details in Adobe Animate. So we'll just jump right in. As you can see at the moment, um, my first step is to open up Blender and I've got a little sketch here that I made previously um, so that I can do the perspective and things correctly. Now, it took me about a day to learn how to use Blender to this extent where all I'm doing is adding in squares, circles, spheres, cylinders, simple shapes, um, so that I don't have to worry about perspective because I am terrible at perspective. So I place all of these elements in the correct layout um, and I do a simple light emitting from the computer screen as well in a moment. Um, but this is just because I'm very bad at perspective, essentially, and this solves that issue for me. I can basically use this as a blueprint for my proper artwork inside Adobe Animate. If you're wondering, this took me about 15 minutes to set up. OK, so this is a step that is really worthwhile for me. And as you can see in the render here, it really helps as well with how light is going to work in our scene, which is an important thing for backgrounds. So that's the first step. Open up Blender, do some basic cubes. I learned from Blender Guru how to do all of this. Uh, it was really simple. Like I said, learned in about a day. Once I don't have to worry about this perspective of a scene, I can move on to actually drawing it. So I take that scene into Adobe Animate. And the first thing I do is on its own layer, I just do all of the line work for the various pieces that I want. And at this point, I try and divide up uh, my background into the different layers that I think I'm going to need. But I really don't want to worry about color at this point. So what I do is I just use the Blender render that we made previously um, to choose shades of gray, flat shades of of gray that my artwork is going to be consisting of so that I'm not getting bogged down in color when I'm just trying to work out the details. Um, so I've made, for example, a graphic symbol for the cabinet on the left, a graphic symbol for the cabinet on the right, a graphic symbol for the floor, for the computer, for the bed, for the um, background, like window area, all different layers and symbols just to make sure that when it comes to animating this scene, I've got the greatest flexibility. And of course, the brilliant thing about doing this in Blender is that if I wanted to choose a different camera angle, I could just re-render that background and draw a new um, background with the same scene at a completely different angle and all the perspective will still be perfect, which is great. So not much to say about this stage. Obviously, uh, the bed here is quite important. I've did some very blocky basics for the bed's perspective. But on top of that, I'm making sure sure to draw some good details just so that um, everything doesn't look like a square because that's what the uh, original influence is. But as you can see, really helpful when it comes to actually drawing things in perspective properly. Um, I drew the person beforehand, nothing fancy going on there. He just has a sort of small looping uh, snoring animation as well. Once all the line work and the grays shades have been put in, I like to work with linear gradients or radial gradients, basically gradients in general when it comes to my backgrounds to add a little bit more depth. So that's the step after this one. We have done all the line work, separated them out into different symbols, and we have blocked them out in solid gray colors. The next step is to add some gradient colors to that. So for this step then, I go back inside each symbol and I choose areas that I would like to have linear gradients on. Um, usually these are larger, flatter areas that I think um, are needed, you need the gradient in order to get that sense of the light sort of traveling across this big flat area so it doesn't look quite so um, 2D, two dimensional. Uh, I forgot that I hadn't drawn the plant yet here, so excuse me while I blast through this plant, but we'll use this as an opportunity to talk a little bit more about the linear gradients. Um, essentially, the way I like to work is uh, the top of the cabinets, the floor, the, the desk, the big flat area of the bed. I will make a linear gradient that goes from one shade of gray to a darker or lighter shade of gray, and I'll place that gradient across the big flat surface, and this gives a sense of you know three dimensionality to something that is essentially 
very flat and very simple, um, which is super useful and a quick way for creating interest in your backgrounds without too much of a time sink being thrown in there. So we've finished up this plant now, and as you can see, I'm doing the same thing with the leaves here, linear gradient going from lighter gray to darker gray. Once all the gradients are done, I like to add a little bit of light into my scene as well. Um, I just did a big blurred out graphic symbol um, made, sorry, a movie clip symbol that I blurred out for the light and did the same thing for the shadow as well. Uh, and this just creates that really strong contrast between um, the light from the computer and the shadow cast behind the chair. And essentially that is the hard part done. I have all of my light information, which is the most important thing. And now it's just a case of going through and choosing the colors that I want. Um, so obviously browns and things dependent on the amount of light that's hitting them. These cabinets are very dark, so I chose a very dark brown and I just swapped out that gray gradient for a colored gradient. Uh, and it's the same thing for the rest of these bits here as well. Um, I try to choose when choosing color palettes, I try to keep things simple only choosing sort of three or four main colors and then basing everything off of shades of that. So you can see this is very heavily uh, brown and blue scene here. Um, where anything was made of wood, I used the same brown colors. Where there were any plants, I used the same green colors, that sort of thing. Um, so quite simple. Um, and it's essentially a case, the only difficult thing really is making sure that you don't change your values of lights when you add the color in. If it's a very light gray, it should be a very light brown, that sort of thing. One way to do this is obviously just to open up your gray in the color palette and just slide the um, slider over to the right to add some color in. Um, but I find it was best if you start with a solid color palette in the first place, you know, a solid green, a solid blue, a solid brown is what I did for this scene. And then I built up from there as well. You see, it's super easy to play around with the colors. I think in the end, I actually decided to get rid of this poster entirely and replace it with a shelf, um, something which is really easy to do when it comes um, to this kind of scene because I just went back into Blender. I added an extra shelf. I re-rendered the scene and I just drew on top of that as well. When it comes to the window here, I'm just doing a slightly see-through um, white for now. And in the next stage, it's all about adding details to the colors, which really bring this to life. Um, as you can see, I'm just adding a quick shade in at the top of the screen here, which I kind of just guesstimated the um, perspective for. But next up is adding the details, which is the really fun step. OK, so the next step is to add the details, and this is where it really comes to life. I'll show you an example of what I do here with this cabinet. So I'll create a new layer inside the symbol on top of my cabinet color layer, which I'll reduce the opacity to around 30 percent and I'll change the blending mode of that layer to overlay. Then using a white and a black brush, depending on whether I want light or shadow, I will just paint over details onto the um, new layer on top. And because we've used a reduced opacity overlay layer, you get this really nice color that is based on the color underneath. And the overlay white makes it brighter, a little bit richer. The overlay black makes it darker and a little bit murkier. Using this, I paint in details such as scratches on the woodwork, veins on the plants, um, but also things like the shadows that are being cast, the hard shadows. Excuse me, I crashed there. Um, the hard shadows and things um, uh, like behind the plant pots and things like that. This light reflected off of the carpet, the strands in the carpet from the original um sort of fibers there, this shadow on the bed and the pillow, that sort of thing. Now, all of this is done with that same technique, that new layer on top, reduce the opacity of the layer, change the blending mode to overlay and then paint in either white or black. And that is it. Um, that is how I get all of these lovely little details. Uh, I think I tried some stripes on the wall here before I decided to get rid of that entirely um, and actually add in a new shelf as well. So regarding adding details, that's all there is to it. You just make that layer. I came back into Blender briefly here, added a bookshelf up on the wall, re-rendered that image, bunged that image back into Adobe Animate, which took me a little bit of time, uh, and then just drew uh, the shelf over the top. So once again, adding colors, doing the linear gradients, picking the colors that I want. This is basically a microcosm of the entire process here. Um, adding in the linear gradients, putting a new layer on top with uh, overlay mode and 30 so percent opacity and then adding in shadows and things like that afterwards. So with that all in mind, let's take a look at the finished thing. 
And there you have it. That is our finished product. The five stages of making backgrounds, building the blocks in Blender, coming in and adding the line work and the basic gray colors, adding our gradients in gray over the top, adding the colors in, and then going in and adding the details with that nice overlay layer mode trick. Hopefully you've gleaned something useful from this um, process of mine. Sorry, this wasn't like a normal tutorial, but if I did that, it would be about two and a half hours long, which is way too long. Um, but hopefully you've learned some tips and tricks. If you have any questions, obviously leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, thank you ever so much. I really appreciate each and every one of you watching and I'll see you next time for another episode of Tip Tar. Absolutely massive thank yous to my level two and above members, some of which are the lovely WN62, Ursula from Manskia, Jenna Carey, Cassie and Bernstein. You guys are lovely. Click the join button below for exclusive perks and benefits. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks and tutorials. Thanks for watching.